Hello everyone. Today I'll, I'll be presenting my paper, Mobility in Low Power Wide Area Network Over Wide Spaces. My name is Dali Ismail. I'm a PhD student at Wayne State University. And this work was done jointly with my advisor, Dr. Abu Sayyid Seifal. Over the past few years, I IoT or Internet of Things became one of the most important technologies with the goal of connecting every device to the internet. However, with different devices in IoT, IoT is starting integrating more mobile nodes in different domains. For example, in agriculture IoT, the use of drones and tractors equipped with sensors is widely adopted now. It is expected there will be around 3 billion devices by the year 2050. So to support massive number of devices in IoT, low power wide area network is regarded as a leading communication technology for IoT. To enable large-scale mobility, cellular-based LP1s rely on the existing infrastructure, which is costly and sometimes unavailable in rural areas. On the other hand, unlicensed or ISM-banned LP1s did not address the mobility challenge well yet. A study on lower performance, which is regarded as a leading LP1 technology, shows its performance is susceptible to minor human mobility. So our goal is to enable mobility in LP1 over white spaces considering snow technology. So what is snow and why snow? So snow is an LP1 technology developed by our lab and it operates over TV white space spectrum. So white spaces are the unused TV channels between 54 and 698 megahertz in the US. It offers less crowded spectrum and it's widely available, especially in rural areas. However, LP1 spectrum, uh, sorry, white space spectrum is dynamic. So the geospatial variation of the white spaces raises challenge for both intra and inter snow mobility. And we need to address this challenge. Uh, also, the physical layer of snow design, of snow design based on a distributed implementation of a distributed implementation of OFDM. We call it DOFDM, where each node transmitter on a narrow OFDM subcarrier. And it also supports individual subcarrier modulation. However, intercarrier interference is more pronounced under mobility due to such design. Snow also offers long range and low power communication and it's highly scalable. So we will see how we address those challenges in LPO in our uh, paper. First, we address the ICI impact. So ICI is mainly introduced due to CFO or carrier frequency offset between the transmitter and receiver due to many reasons such as imperfect hardware frequency mismatch and Doppler shift due to mobility. The existing implementation of SNOW actually estimates and compensates for CFO in two cases, when the nodes are stationary and when the nodes are moving at known speed. However, snow nodes are energy constrained and low cost and low, uh, are energy constrained and low cost and may not be equipped to determine speeds. In our approach, we adapt CFO estimation approach in existing snow and we address its shortcomings or limitation. So if we have a node and a base station, the CFO is calculated as far as during the join process. So the CFO is basically the difference between their frequencies. When the node is moving at speed, we'll call it V. So the Doppler frequency offset of that node is calculated as follows, where V is the velocity, C is the speed of light, and F of C is the subcarrier center frequency. So considering delta F as the CFO with the node is stationary, experience a total CFO of delta F plus delta F of I of V, which is the Doppler frequency offset. So it's a summation of both offset. However, if the node speed changes, the total CFO changes accordingly. So it's the node or we need to reestimate the CFO. However, the road has no way to determine if the speed increases or decreases. So to address this issue, we enable periodic CFO estimation. 
where the time domain samples are used for CFO estimation on the joint subcareer uh, FFI in the base station based on the traditional CFO estimation approach. And basically the parts per million of the base station, which indicates how much the base station crystal frequency may deviate from the nominal value that is giving as follow. And we can, we can calculate the CFO of our subcarrier F of I as followed during the joint process, giving the parts per million the base station. In that case, if the node speed changes, we don't need to consider the, uh, the known speed and the CFO considers the new speed automatically as follows the delta F of I when stationary plus the Doppler shift according to the moving node. Next, we address the geospatial variation of white space within the same snow. And we know due to long range, a node's mobility even within the same network is affected or affects the spectrum availability. For example, subcarriers assigned to a node at one location may, may not be available if the node moves to a new location within the same base station ring or covering. So we make the two following assumptions. First, the base station knows the location information of its coverage area. Second, the node knows the degree of their mobility. And basically the node can provide a rough estimation of its mobility when it's joining the network or the system designer can do so for each mobile node. So we handle this problem of geospatial variation of white space by proposing a mobility aware subcarrier assignment policy as follow. First, the base station orders the nodes based on their mobilities. So stationary node first and most mobile last. It also orders the subcarrier based on their availability from least widely available to the most available. And if there are M subcarriers and N nodes, each subcarrier is shared by N over M nodes. And then each subcarrier is assigned N over M nodes that are not yet assigned the subcarrier starting from the beginning of the ordered nodes. Next, we look or address the mobility problem that rises when the node moves out of the range of a base station. Specifically, we have two challenges, base station and primary user detection or distinguishing between base station and primary users and base station association problem through subcarrier alignment. So to handle mobility across snow, first a direct approach to minimize the base station discovery over here is that the current base station can provide a node before the node moves the channels that the base station would find the with the would find basically its neighboring base station. So for Looking at this figure, we have eight locations and we consider communication range R and the location of the base station at zero, zero, assuming Cartesian plan. And the node, a base station can provide the node with neighboring base station at those eight different locations. However, the node needs to inform the base station that it's moving first. And also it needs to know it's moving direction, which those low power nodes are not equipped to do so. So our approach is to utilize the receive signal feature to distinguish between TV station and base station. So for primary user detection, the FFC regulation for protecting primary users defines a protection contour for each TV station as the area where the receive signal strength is greater than minus 84 dBm. It also recommends antenna height of 10 meters for portable devices for accurate uh, protection of TV uh, primary users. However, we consider an antenna height of two meters and we compensate for a difference through how the urban propagation model using the antenna correlation factor. And it shows as shows here in this equation and it yields 7.5 dB, which will be added uniformly to the RSS readings, making to, uh, measurement that were noisy before considered closer to the threshold. 
So we recorded 1,500 measurements for five TV channels in Detroit, Michigan area using Texas Instruments CC1310 devices. And we use Google Wide Space Database as our ground truth and we compare to the spectrum analyzer. So our result shows that when not we when we did we did not compensate for the antenna height, some of the channels have an average detection error of almost 100 percent. For example, channel 14, 22, and 33 compared to spectrum and riser. So when we compensate for antenna height, the the average detection error reduces significantly as comparable to spectrum analyzer performance. Next, we address the subcarrier alignment problem. So different snow can have different subcarrier bandwidth and we assume that each base station uses a fixed subcarrier bandwidth from a fixed set of subcarriers, 100, 200, 400, and 600 kilohertz to simplify our subcarrier synchronization problem. And we utilize time and frequency domain energy sensing to synchronize the subcarriers. So the time domain sensing calculates the energy level using moving average. So the channel is considered busy if the output exceeds a predefined threshold. Uh, however, time domain sensing cannot distinguish between different subcarriers. So to do so, we analyze the frequency domain. So we calculate the power spectrum density and we analyze the power distribution and compare it with all possible overlapping patterns. So if the power is uniformly distributed, we have fully overlapped subcarriers we could communicate. Otherwise, only a fraction of the channel is occupied and it's extremely hard to determine due to many factors such as frequency selective fading and the imperfect hardware filters. However, this is possible in our implementation due to the limited number of bandwidth, meaning we have limited number of overlapping patterns. So our result for subcarrier alignment latency shows that at maximum, our approach takes 5.8 milliseconds to align subcarriers, giving different uh, uh, subcarrier bandwidths. We conduct, we conduct our experiments in Midtown, Detroit, Michigan area, and the map shows the location and distances for the outdoor experiments. We implemented our uh, mobility approach in two types of devices, so T TICC 1310 and USRP devices. We use USRP B210 as our base station. Use 10 TICC 13 devices, C1310 devices as our snow nodes and seven USRP B200 devices as snow nodes. So first for the experiment with TICC 1310, we observe the reliability under mobility during minor human mobility inside uh, the computer sci science building at Wayne State University. And the figure shows that the reliability is slightly affected due to changing, changing in channel condition during mobility. However, it's still acceptable reliability results. We also measured the energy consumption and latency based on the setup shown above here in this slide. The result shows that both energy and latency uh, are affected during mobility due to the overhead from the base station discovery and subcarrier alignment. We also experimented with USRP devices for outdoors and we observed the reliability over distance in outdoor environment where the mobile node is moving at varying speed up to 40 miles per hour. And the result shows that the reliability is impacted by distance for both stationary and mobile nodes due to increasing interference. In conclusion, we enabled mobility and sensor network over wide spaces. We propose a dynamic CFO estimation and compensation technique to handle ICI impact. We handled the geospatial variation of wide spaces through a mobility aware subcarrier assignment, and we propose a fast and energy efficient base station discovery and association technique. Thank you everyone for attending my presentation. <laughs>